Hello everyone, hello again, thanks for, thanks for watching. This is the last video of the series and it's going to be a quick overview of linked data and what it's all about. Now, the idea of linked data is actually newer than the semantic web but it actually, uh, it's a nice sort of uh, a coincidence that it looks like that the semantic web was actually designed to be used you know in terms of uh, of linked data or the data there is going to, was going to be used uh, as linked data but anyway the idea makes sense actually after the semantic web but it looks like the semantic web was designed for that uh, <clears throat> yeah so as, as the book says here I remember we're, we're actually still using this book here um, it, it may be easy to think of the semantic web as building on the ideas behind linked data. So what is linked data really? Yes, Linked data is just a set of best practices for providing a data infrastructure that makes it easier to share data across the web. So linked data, it's not a specification, it's just a set of best practices for providing data infrastructure to make it easier for us to share data across the web. Remember the name actually explains it all. Linked data. So data th data that is actually linked to each other to increase usage, to increase interoperability, to increase uh, or to increase the outcome that we can make or that computers computers can make when using the data. Of course we can use semantic web technologies. We've seen them before, RDFS, RDF schema, our language, Sparkle to build application around that data. So when, 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 whenever the data is shared, i.e. we have uh, uh, data coming from different sources, from multiple sources uh, around the web, from different places in the world, if we build applications around that data, then we can maximize our outcome and maximize the benefit that we can get from that data. Now, uh, Tim Berners-Lee has four principles of linked data. I'm taking these from the book. And the bold text is Tim Berners-Lee's uh, words, or and this is a simple explanation again from the book. So what Tim Berners-Lee Berners Berners -Lee say said that if you want to uh, uh, have linked data, then for example, you should use URIs as names for things. Remember, we learned about IDF before. We learned about using the prefixes and the URIs whenever we want to have some data about a certain concept or about a certain resource. Remember the triples, subject, predicate, and object. And remember, we said that the subject and the predicate, or the subject and the property, are always URIs, and the object or the value of the property can be a URI or maybe a literal. So the idea of using URIs is that they're just the best way available to uniquely identify things. You remember this word, uniquely identify things. Remember when we said before that, for example, if we have, if we are using uh, uh, the uh, the word, for example, um, title. I remember from one of my previous tutorials, titles can be a title of anything. It can be a title of an individual, or it can be a title of um, a book, or a, or a video, or a CD, or any other kind of work. And how how do we distinguish between between the two words if we use them in the right context? Well, using URIs, we can say, for example, that we have a URI that uh, defines the concept of a person, and we're using the word title from there. And then a URI that's, for example, like for example, the fourth. If you remember, fourth, F O F, friend of a friend, or um, 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 a URI to say that we are using the word title from uh, something from a schema or from an owl ontology that defines the defines or describes the concept of anything really that can have a title. Anyway, URIs are the best way available to uniquely identify things. I'm sure that makes sense. Go back to the previous videos of this series if you want to know what URIs are all about. Now, whenever we use URIs, we should use HTTP URIs so people can look up those names. So whenever we try to have a property or, um, as we said before, a subject um, or um, um, an object, if we use URIs, then we need to make them HTTP URIs rather than maybe FTP or SMTP or any other form of URIs, maybe a mail to or anything like that. Yeah, make sure it's F F HTTP. Why? So people can actually look up those names and find useful information. Remember the idea of sharing data. Why is to increase inter interoperability? If we have FTP URIs or, H or I'm sorry. Uh, um, um, SMTP or mail to URIs, they may they are not very very useful, but HTTP always is always useful as we can look up data 
and retrieve data and maybe read or learn more about things so we can maximize the benefit now if someone tries to look up a URI, remember we need to make it a HTTP URI if someone uh, remember URIs, URLs, you know, URLs are special case of URIs and our previous explanation from the pre previous videos. Now, if someone tries to look up a URI, imagine that you have a URI. Remember when we, we spoke about prefixes and URIs, we said there may be there may be something there and there may be nothing. Yes. So, imagine someone tries to look up a URI, just copies and pastes it into uh, a web browser and to the the, the uh, uh, navigation bar, address bar, and then hits enter. What do you think he should find? Well, we usually should, should provide useful information so people can actually make the most out of that. We can provide information that is recognizable by RDF or by Sparkle, by IDF star. That means it can be as a simple normal RDF or RDFS, i.e. RDF schema, or by Sparkle. So data there should be useful to be used by standards like these, or maybe even by Humux. So put something there, should be using a recognized, a recognized standard. Why? Because if it's a simple HTTP page, then, I'm sorry, HTML page, that at least we humans can read it, or if it's an RDF or RDFS or, or something that Sparkle can read, then, then the machine can read it. Now, the fourth point is to include links to other URIs so that they can discover uh, more things. So we can discover more things or applications can discover more things. Let me give you an example. Imagine the internet, imagine the web rather, and we have all of these pages, my personal page, your personal page, CNN, BBC, any kind of, of, of websites. Imagine we don't have links or these websites don't have links to each other. Imagine, imagine this. Yeah, we don't have pages don't have links to each other, and websites don't have links to each other. That would be quite boring, and the web wouldn't be the web that we know about now. Yes, yes, I'm sure you agree. This is exactly the same concept that whenever we try to include links uh, uh, and link URIs to each other, then th then using that we can do more interesting things and we can maximize the benefit. How that makes sense that. The concept here is just like the concept of having the web where websites don't have links to each other. It would be quite boring, would limit the benefit or, or the outcome that we can make out of those pages. Likewise here, we need to uh, uh, link URIs to each other, so at least do our best, of course, do our best to link URIs to each other so we can increase the benefit. As I said before, I'm going to stop here. This is the last video of the series. Thank you very much for watching. I hope. Uh, things are making sense. I hope I've helped you some way or another to understand the concept behind the semantic web, behind RDF, be behind OWL at least with my simple introduction, behind linked data and behind the whole idea behind the semantic web. Thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you in my next series. Bye-bye now.